Uh, we have a very special guest today coming to uh, discuss about Krishna consciousness. It's uh, just the base. Okay, Hare Krishna. I think Prabhuji is here. Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji, for uh, blessing us with your association today. So uh, this is our small community. We are uh, mostly from Jackson, but we are uh, some of the family members from India and some friends from other parts of the world are also joining to hear from you. Um, so uh, if if you allow, can I give a quick uh, introduction about you to everybody? So, Hare Krishna, uh, I'm so blessed to be in all of your company and feel so fortunate and grateful to all of you. Thank you. So, thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say a few things about Prabhuji. I know that some of uh, us have already been taking classes uh, from him, some of the kids and other uh, people in the group already know him, uh, but uh, uh, His Grace Shubhilas Govinda Das Prabhuji is a very advanced uh, devotee. He's been practicing spirituality from a very young age, and um, Prabhuji has uh, graciously accepted our in invitation to this class today. Um, Prabhuji, um, uh, from um, uh, what I understand, from what I know about you so far, I know that you have uh, uh, double initiation, Prabhuji has achieved um, Brahman Diksha at a very young age. It is a very, very big uh, feat. It is uh, almost um, impossible in this age of Kali to achieve so much um, uh, spiritual advancement at such a young age. And Prabhuji received uh, uh, Diksha from uh, His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj. Some of us are familiar with uh, Maharaj. We have heard his lectures and um, uh, Prabhuji is one of his uh, disciples. Um, so um, Prabhuji is a grasta, and uh, um, I'm not sure Prabhuji is your uh, wife, Mataji is joining today as well? Um, I think she is doing something, so maybe no. Okay. Prabhuji is very busy there. He's a professional, he's a grasta, and he has many, many services that he has taken up. Um, Prabhuji is uh, giving uh, daily Srimad Bhagavatam class to his uh, group of devotees in Tampa. And uh, I forgot to mention he's based in, his, in uh, Tampa, Florida, or close to Tampa. Um, and he conducts uh, weekly Bhagavad Gita classes for kids and for adults, separate classes. Uh, plus, he teaches yoga three times a week. So that's that's a lot of preaching services, which uh, we can, I cannot even imagine. It's an uh, it's, uh, unimaginable feat. Um, but um, Prabhuji is making time in service of uh, Guru and Gauranga like that. Um, so um, I, I think I was also blessed to uh, see one of the yagya ceremonies that Prabhuji conducted at his uh, uh, in Tamp Tampa on the ceremony of uh, Gita Jayanti, which was very beautiful to see. Yay. So uh, with that introduction, I would like like uh, Prabhuji uh, to please uh, shower us with the nectar of his words from his own lotus mouth about the uh, glories of Krishna consciousness, this beautiful process that have been given to the whole world by um, uh, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, our beloved uh, teacher, uh, please give us the uh, nectar of this process on how to get started on this path and how to develop more and more faith in this path. Please, Prabhuji, uh, we, are, we are very, some of us may be older here, but please treat us like toddlers in front of you. In spiritual path, we are, we are very, very small. So please uh, uh, treat us uh, as such. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much to all the wonderful devotees. I know some of you and, and you're all very, very elevated souls and, and coming here and trying to share something is certainly a, uh, an opportunity to purify myself because our holy scriptures explain that the more we share, it's for our own purification. 
So I'm so grateful to all of you, Ravi Prabhu and family, Avinash, Abhishek Prabhu, uh, Murli Prabhu and family, and Dasha Mataji family, and Anita Mataji, and Anita, and I know some of you and some of you I don't know, Puja Kumari Mataji, Shardul Prabhu and family, Sharat Prabhu, thank you, thank you, Neelam Mataji, Yashida Mataji. I'm so grateful to all of you for, for taking out your precious time on a short weekend <laughs> because you slept one hour less probably or the time ran faster this weekend. But still you are so eager to come and hear about Krishna consciousness. So that shows a great sincerity on your part. And whatever Mataji said, uh, I'm not going detail because if I try to talk about it, uh, time will go in there only. <laughs> but great souls like to encourage, and she's like my elder sister, trying to encourage me to practice Krishna consciousness. So taking those words as blessings and those qualities which I should try to develop, uh, we will start. And uh, I was given this topic uh, I'm going to share my screen also, so I hope I can do that. So I think you should be able to see it now, right? Wonderful. Yes, Professor. Yes, and, and some are not on mute, so if the host can take care of uh, so that there's... And of course, you'll get a chance to speak also. So this will not be a monologue because I don't want all of you to sleep because often when I start speaking, the tendency is that everyone else goes to sleep. So I'll request you in the middle so that you can also read something and we can all learn from each other because you all have so much experience, so much wisdom, so much bhakti. So I certainly want to hear your wonderful insights as well. Thanks. So Krishna consciousness, is it a science? Is it faith? Have I seen God? Can we see God? Who has seen God? All these questions may come in the mind of an inquisitive person. Correct? So we'll try to understand this topic from the different holy scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Chaita Amrit, and also in our present intuitive and rational thinking. Because Bhakti does not say to, to stop being rational. Bhakti does not say to stop, become dumb-headed or become dull-headed, or don't use your intelligence, right? His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, one of my teachers, mentions that we should surrender with intelligence, not, not uh, blind faith. So bhakti is certainly not, not blind faith. So we'll discuss on all those topics, but whatever we discuss is by the mercy of the spiritual master. So it's very, very important to invoke uh, auspiciousness and seek the blessings of our Guru Parampara before we jump into this topic and start to discuss on this, this topic. So we'll chant these prayers. Om Magyana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parichana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastuti Dakta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaura Bhaktavinda Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamini 
नमस्ते सरस्वते देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देश तारिणी मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगुम लंगते गिरी यत्तम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिण परमानंद माधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर गुरवे गौरचंद्राय राधिकाय तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम नम पंकज नाभाय नम पंकज मलिने नम पंकज निय नमस्ते पंकजांग्रिय कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंदगोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम वंशकलपतरूभ्यश्च कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनीभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम सो आई लाइक टू ऑफर माय प्रणाम्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू एट योर लोटस फीट सो प्लीज गिव योर प्रेयर्स एंड ब्लेसिंग सो दैट फॉर नेक्स्ट सम टाइम आई कैन बी एम्पावर्ड बाय योर मर्सी एंड द मर्सी ऑफ गुरु एंड गौरंगा टू स्पीक ऑन दिस टॉपिक ऑल दो आई डोंट हैव एनी क्वालिफिकेशन but by the prayers of guru and vaishnavas even a blind can see even a lame can cross over mountains so this is the power of prayers and blessings so certainly i um, i really really need those <laughs> thank you so there are three ways of attaining knowledge correct one is called pratyaksha praman one is called anuman praman and one is called shabda praman correct so who can tell me who can unmute and tell or raise your hand and tell what is pratyaksha praman anyone tell hmm. you know yes it is sampada alta yes um is it as it is like from scriptures or like that Yeah, it's basically seeing. Okay, I see. Oh, it's a pencil here. Oh, it's a pencil. Seeing is believing. Many, many people say, "Oh, I believe in what I see. I, I don't believe in what I don't see." Right? Sounds like logical. Sounds correct, but has a lot of problem. Anuman. Anuman means guess. Oh, I think it will rain tomorrow. Oh, I think it will snow tomorrow. Oh, I think the world will end tomorrow. If I keep making these anumans, what will you all call me? This is a crazy person, right? <laughs> so Anuman Praman certainly not the right way. I think I think it's I think this is not a pencil. I think this is just a yeah you know, like a, some some gadget. So if I keep making these guesses, it it is certainly not the right way to attain knowledge. And what about Pratyaksha? It may sometimes seem that it's a very good way to attain knowledge, but we will see how this is also not a good way to attain knowledge. What is Shabda Praman? shabd means words shabd brahman the, the words of authority the word coming from guru sadhu and shastra the words of the spiritual master the words of the scriptures so that's the best way of attaining knowledge and that is called shabd praman praman means proof so let's see the issues with the pratyaksha praman okay in pratyaksha praman how are we attaining knowledge using our senses seeing with the eyes hearing with the ears or smelling with the nose etc but aren't our senses prone to illusion correct sometimes we see things what they are not right how many of you seen mirage like water on the road on a dry sunny road you'll see water but is that really water no or no no okay some of you said no <laughs> it's not water right you do you see that kind of a, a reflection and then senses have uh, you know humans have cheating propensities in order to get something uh you know we have seen even in the scientific world the so called scientific world people do lot of cheating plagiarism is one of the common things in thesis research phds etc right imperfect senses our senses are imperfect correct how many of us can hear dog whistles raise your hand if you can hear dog whistle right can the dogs hear dog whistle right that's why it's named dog whistle that what does it mean it means that our senses have a range correct our senses have a range of seeing our senses have a range of hearing our senses have a range if i read a text which is like just one 0.1 cm or 
uh, one tenth of an inch away from my eye. Who all can read that? Can we read that? No, no. It's so close, still I can't read, right? Or eagles, they can see from one mile away up. Can we all see? Who all can see from one mile? That shows that our senses also have a range. Our eyes have range, our, our, our all the senses have a range. That's why we need glasses also, <laughs> right? Because we can't even see even with the eyes. No, not to offend anyone with glasses. I myself have glasses from very, very you know, young age. But the point is that, that the knowledge attained from these imperfect senses with these four defects, will that be the pure knowledge? No, correct? So therefore, we need to, to turn to something which can give us pure knowledge, right? Let's, let's take some of the examples also, okay? About illusion. How many of you see uh, these lines kind of touching or about to touch? How many of you see inclined lines, right? Lines are inclined, correct? But now you focus on that particular line, it will, uh, it will not appear to be converging because all of these are parallel lines, correct? But they appear to be converging, right? But if you focus on any pair of two lines, they will not appear to be converging, but if you, the rest will appear to be converging, right? It's just, a, it's not a video, it's not some magic, it's simple optical illusion, which shows that the senses are not perfect. How many of you see a triangle in here, right? You all see a triangle, most of us? Yeah, there, there is no triangle, right? It's just a matter of illusion. How many of you have, you know, eaten something uh, sour, like a lemon or something, and then even a normal a thing with a normal taste will appear to be sweet, correct? Or same with if we touch our hands with warm water, and then the normal water will appear to be cold, correct? So it's just a matter of uh, illusion, perception. So material science keeps changing, correct? The books have different editions. The scientific research have different editions. There are so many different opinions. Even with the corona, there are so many opinions. There are so many different vaccines. So many different people say some, this is good, this is not good. So, munne munne matir bhinne. Everyone has different opinions. Correct? And it keeps changing. There is revised editions of books, correct? Or there are revised editions of scholarly articles. Why? Because the knowledge perceived or obtained from these four, uh, from the human beings who are prone to these four defects, like, like making mistakes, limited range of, of senses, illusion, etc. So how can we understand perfect knowledge from imperfect senses? Because God is perfect and the knowledge given by the Supreme Lord is also perfect. But we are not perfect. So we need to approach to someone who is perfect to attain the knowledge which is perfect. Is it perfect? <laughs> Sorry, it's too complicated, but it will make sense. Now, some of will say, well, I don't believe in, in all these things. I believe in seeing. How many of you believe in Mahatma Gandhi? How many of you believe? You believe, right? There was some person. How many of you believe in a place called Alaska? You believe? How many of you believe in your mother? Right? Did we, did we see, or, or let's say, did we, how many of you saw Mahatma Gandhi? but we all have read in our history books, correct? How we got to know about our mother, right? From, from or our parents, how, how we got to know, right? It starts with faith. It starts with understanding. It, it starts with like Alaska. Most of us may not have been there, right? But we still believe. Why? Because we have read in the geography books, probably we have met people, those who have been there. So friends, it's, it's not a question of, oh, I have I, you know, do I have faith or not? 
because we are putting faith in everything of life correct we are putting in faith in everything of life it's a matter of where do we put our faith correct how many of us have used some kind of you know sunscreen lotion right we use some form of sunscreen lotion and it says oh it protects from uv rays how many of you have seen uv rays right but we still use this correct otherwise oh i'll get tan i'll get this i'll get skin burn and this and that we we use these all these so we are putting faith in every aspect of our life you know there are so many like we drive on the cars right all of us use cars to drive on the roads there are accidents on the roads but aren't we putting faith in the fellow passengers in the other people driving on the road that the truck behind me will not slam my car isn't it faith every day 3700 as per the world health organization statistics 3700 accidents happen where people have fatal death that means they die in road accidents 3700 people that's more than 100 people every hour can you imagine so by the time you we have been meeting here it's a hard it's a sorry to say but 100 people have died in road accident and this is not my hari krishna number this is on the google <laughs> right so i'm not concocting these these facts and figures you can go to and uh, insert yourself as well and these are fatal injuries these are like death injuries what to speak of about 20 to 50 million people getting injured in these accidents raise your hand if you have seen a road accident somewhere right we all have seen raise your hand if you stop driving after seeing it no one stop driving right that that means what that means you are putting faith even after seeing it correct that i will not be that person and i hope and pray that we don't be that person because we pray for everyone's well um, सर्वे सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामय सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित दुख भाग भवि वी प्रे फॉर एवरीवन्स बेनिफिट एंड एवरीवन्स वेल विशर बट दीस थिंग्स हैपन एवरी डे करेक्ट हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव बीन टू अम्यूजमेंट पार्क्स एंड दीस आर रियल पिक्चर्स दीस आर रियल पिक्चर्स आई हैव नॉट मेड दीस अप लॉट ऑफ इंजरीज हैपेंस ओवर देयर आल्सो आर एंड वी पुटिंग फेथ से यस or put that thumbs up button if you agree that we are putting faith in the reaction button we are putting faith that i'll not be that person right how many of you us travel in the flights right we have tra- traveled at some point and there have been multiple cases right you all agree we are putting faith by traveling in bus or rail or road there are accidents in every form in every aspect we go to a doctor a surgeon we do, we do we know what they are doing i mean we are unconscious correct are we putting faith there we go to a restaurant behind the scene we know what they are cooking have they put poison in the food we are just trusting them we go to a flight we are do we check the pilot's credential hey is the, did you fuel it up is all i'm <laughs> is it going to you know land <laughs> or did you just guarantee take off right we are putting faith in every aspect and then you know going to a barber shop imagine the the sharp razor of the barber is so close to the neck one wrong move if he wants he can just chop us off right correct and cause a fatal injury there have been sc- shootings in the schools correct you all have heard in the news at least how many of us stopped sending our children to the schools right did anyone stop sending our children to the school no what does all that mean all that means what bhagavad gita says it's not about if we have faith or not it's about in whom and where do we put our faith correct so everyone is putting faith my friends in every aspect of life bhagavad gita what's anyone like to read this yes avani what did you want to read this 17.3 verse from bhagavad gita O son of Bharata, according to one's existence under the various modes of nature, one evolves a particular kind of faith. The living being is said to be of a particular faith according to the modes he has acquired. Wonderful. 
So what does it tell us? That tells us that we are putting faith according to the modes we inquire, acquire, the modes of goodness, passion, ignorance. So no one is faithless, correct? And, and even after seeing, I mean, so many examples I shared and you all gave a big thumbs up that you all agree with all those ideas, correct? That we are putting faith in every aspect of our life. So now it's a question how to put the faith in the right thing, correct? How can we move our faith from the wrong to the right? And how Krishna consciousness is a very, very scientific method, correct? And this is like a general scientific experiment, right? How many of you have done some form of experiment and you agree with these six steps? Okay, where they will read, you agree? Will they Read, read these six, six steps and, and share what you have learned in your school about this. Uh, so step one, you ask a question and you form a hypothesis, you experiment, you observe and record your results, and you draw conclusions, and then you share your findings with other people. Or like, so... We had done an experiment a few weeks ago in science. And so not, I don't really remember what our question was, but <laughs> it was about pressure. And we had to form a hypothesis if the tablet would explode or not. Then we did the experiment and we observed and it did explode and we wrote it down mm. and we the conclusion and said our hypothesis was correct because because um the tablet did explode and then we just told our teachers about it wonderful and you shared your findings and krishna consciousness is exactly like that do you want me to prove it hmm? so that exactly happens in krishna consciousness the greatest science, right? The first step is to ask a question, right? Athato Brahma Jigyasa. Who am I? Who is God? Is there, a, is there a God? How can I know him? All these are questions which an intelligent person like all of you, you know, inquire. Tad Vigyanartham Saguru Meva Bigachi. And then we go to the right person to ask those questions. And then there's a hypothesis, right? that Krishna consciousness will help me to get out of the perplexities of life, will help me to solve the challenges of life. And then the teacher, like where they said, the teacher told him to follow a process, right? To do the experiment, there are certain steps to be followed. There are certain precautions to be done. There are certain safety gear. You have to wear some you know, safety glasses. You have to wear apron or things like that. The teacher will tell what you need to do in the experimentation phase or what is the process to follow the or to find your you know find out for yourself so sadhana bhakti done under proper authority under proper scriptures is like the experimentation phase correct so we should be at least open minded we should be open minded in the experimentation phase and this is free experimentation right no one is saying that you have to give millions of dollars to do this experiment, right? No one is asking money. All we are asking is to try it out with an open mind, correct? And follow the experiment. And then you record and observe the changes yourself. You, one who follows this process, the, the experimentation phase in the sadhana bhakti phase under the right guru, under the right scriptures, like all of you are congregating every week, discussing Bhagavad Gita, discussing helping each other to be Krishna conscious. And I'm sure you will see changes in yourself. What kind of changes? The impurities will go, right? Our uh, bad thoughts, anger, greed, envy, pride, etc., will keep on going down. And divine qualities will manifest. Sarve gunai tatra samasati sura. Anyone who genuinely follows this process will certainly see the right results. Would anyone like to share their observation and record phase? How is it going? Anyone wants to share? Do they feel some difference in the past and the present? Since they're 
doing the experimentation phase. Anyone from the Jackson community? I'd like love to hear your thoughts. That how you had some ideas or mindset before, and now it has you know. Anyone? Yes, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, so, um, so yeah, we have been uh, you know doing this a uh, little bit for a while, but since the last uh, one year, we have been chanting 16 rounds regularly. And which we not we were not doing before, so more than a year now. But um, but it is it just feels very different. It just feels very uh, you know the problems still come you know, but it helps us uh, be a little bit more um, to tackle them better, knowing what is the bigger picture. So so definitely, Prabhuji, I think uh, this has been very helpful and uh, in in you know spiritual life. Uh, as well as material life in terms of uh, getting over day-to-day -day hiccups and con concerns. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's wonderful observations. Because if we follow the experimentation phase rightly, and then the right results will certainly come. That means if you are, and we will discuss more in detail, what is the five ways to experiment, to improve our sadhana process. How many of you want to know that? The five most important ways to improve our, our experimentation phase. Okay, most of you want, so I'll share that. So others who don't want will have to be tolerant. <laughs> okay, draw conclusions. So after that, you will feel that, yes, this process is working. This medicine is very effective. I have been trying this for six months or, or one year or whatever time, and I can see the difference in myself. And then let's say if you go to, to a doctor and then doctor treats you very nicely and, and then you get good feedback and then your, your disease also gets cured, then won't you share that, uh, refer that doctor to others, your friends also, correct? That go to that doctor only. He or she is very nice and treats the, the, the disease in a very nice way, correct? And the same with Krishna consciousness because everyone is kind of suffering in some way or form. Then we must try to share with others by sharing prasadam, by sharing books, by sharing holy name, by inviting them to programs like these so that we all can spread that happiness because the world is looking for it. The world is looking, how can we be freed from those diseases, those suffering, right? And Bhagavad Gita 9.2 mentions, Rajavidya Rajaguyam Pavitram Idam Uttamam Pratyaksha Vagamam Dharmyam Susukham Kartum Avyayam Yes, Vinita Mataji, would you like to read the translation for this one? This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct per perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and is and it is joyfully performed. Thank you. Thank you so much. It can be perceived by one's own self. For example, if one is hungry, Correct? If one is hungry and one eats good prasadam, then will that person will have to give a certificate to me that, oh, I am now, my, my hunger is quenched, right? When your hunger is quenched, do you write a certificate? Now my hunger is quenched. You feel it, right? You feel it yourself. You observe and record. Hmm? I think Anita Mataji was sharing, uh, I think a few weeks back, you want to share like your observation and since you started the process of Krishna consciousness, how and what changes you feel in your life or in the lives of your kids? Can you share a few thoughts, Mataji? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, everyone. So I think the biggest change I realized within myself is to be yourself. Not be, in, you know, withdrawn like into some kind of uh, emotion by somebody else statement or something like that and uh, the other thing I uh, realized is the confidence like when I know myself I am confident and uh, you know Krishna consciousness is also teaching me the honesty honesty with myself even though somebody is not watching me I'm honest because I'm keeping Krishna in the center and uh, yeah so I don't need somebody to watch me so these are, you know, some of the few things that I have realized within myself. And also with my children, I'm seeing that it's slowly coming in. 
and uh, I see a big change in them as well. I mean, this is a big change for me. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. And it's one can perceive it oneself. If one is honest to oneself, one will be able to perceive one's change of you know, thoughts, change of consciousness from materialistic consciousness to spiritual consciousness, from Dhritarashtra and Duryodhana consciousness to Arjuna consciousness, from spiritual blindness to self-awakening, right? Because blindness is not just of the eyes. That's a very mild form of blindness. But even though one may have eyes, but one could be spiritually blind. And scriptures explain that's called Pasham Apina Pashyati, seeing but not seeing. Duryodhana in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, you know, was overcome with lust, anger, greed, pride, and did not want any kind of peace. Same was the attachment of Dhritarashtra towards his children. So they are referred to as spiritually blind. But bhakti opens our eyes. And therefore we chant this prayer. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshur Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha the spiritual master, the scripture, the supreme Lord, help us to see things in the true perspective. Help us to put our faith in the right direction so that we can understand who we are, what's the goal of life, and why I'm here. Why things are happening. Why do bad things happen to good people? Right? I didn't ask for this kind of reversal in my life. Why did this happen? What, what's the higher purpose? But the modern Ravana <laughs> it destroys or keeps destroys or destroying our faith in, in the spiritual subjects. So nowadays, it's a sad situation that we have more faith in the newspapers, so-called websites and YouTube and so many channels are there, so many videos, Instagram and, and Twitter and whatnot. If I say, oh, Bhagavad Gita says this, then I'll, many people will raise with, with see with a doubted but if I say, oh, Harvard Business Review says this, then they, oh, the Harvard Business Review says this, then it must be true, right? Correct? Raise your hand if most people think like that in this day and age, right? <laughs> and it's true. I mean, it's okay to be honest, right? Many, many people think like, why? Because of the Ravana, which is destroying the faith of the seed of faith. It's kidnapping the the, the mother Sita, or which is compared to the Jiva. So let's not get the Ravana of the social media and let's not heed, read or hear from any Tom, Dick, Harry about spiritual subjects because they will say their own stuff. Therefore, we don't read Bhagavad Gita. We read Bhagavad Gita as it is, as given by the Supreme Lord, as coming in the Guru Parampara. There are hundreds of Bhagavad Gita, there are hundreds of articles, thousands of articles, thousands of videos, thousands of people speaking. But if we read from any Tom, Dick, Harry, we will not learn about Lord Hari, right? We need to hear from proper Guru Sadhu and Shastra, this proper spiritual master, proper scriptures under proper guidance. Otherwise, the experimentation will not go correct. Otherwise, the conclusions we'll draw will will misdraw conclusions. And therefore, sometimes people misdraw conclusions. They say, well, religion teaches about, about fighting, religion teaches about violence, religion teaches about division, because they are not doing the experiment under the right teacher. Therefore, the wrong conclusions are coming. They're not following the right guru. So we'll talk about this story maybe at the end if time permits, but if we'll just keep moving for now. The nine stages of bhakti. Shraddha is the first stage. Shraddha, sadhu sangha, bhajan kriya, anartha nivritti, nishtha, ruchi, asakti, bhav, and prem. So the first step of bhakti or the bhakti ladder is shraddha. Shraddha means faith. So faith is very, very important. Now we have already discussed that we are all putting faith. So no one can say I am faithless. It's a matter of where we are putting faith. Correct? You agree with that? Okay, everyone agrees. And it starts with little faith. And this knowledge can all, only people who have little faith can understand this knowledge. Correct? Because someone, you know, invites like this program is open for everyone, right? It's not only open for 
uh, those who have certain qualifications or those who have certain money or those who have certain um, background. No, right? This is open for anyone and everyone. But why only certain selected people come? Because all of you have some faith. Bhakti begins with little faith. So that faith is nourished in the association of devotees. So the journey of bhakti starts with faith and continues with association. And then what happens? And then they teach us about the proper experimentation. Correct? That is process of devotional service, like reading, hearing, chanting. And then they will say, observe. Oh, you will see the observation phase. Anartha nivritti. Your impurities will go. And all this and slowly, one keeps doing it steadily. Taste will develop. And ultimately, your love of Godhead will come and that person will share also. In the six symptoms of surrender to Lord Hari, there are multiple symptoms, but the third symptom will focus. Rakshishyati iti vishwasu. Having firm faith that only Bhagawan is one's protector. Correct? And there are multiple cases. Having firm faith that Krishna is always there with me. Don't fear when Krishna is near. Hmm? Having And how will that develop? That will develop again through proper sadhana bhakti. Otherwise, we will get a lot of fear. We will get anxiety, pa, 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 ma, a lot of hard work, a lot of foaming till the mouth, parishram, pena, uh, bhaya, vyartha. This ultimately, everything goes in vain. And the time, the Yamadutas knock at the door. Oh, it's, it's mrityu time. Pa, 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 ma. That's why this material world is called pavarga. But a devotee has firm faith that Krishna is always there with me. And there are other symptoms also, like he does, she does only things which are favorable for bhakti, reject things which are not favorable. And accepting the Supreme Lord as one's maintainer, a complete submission of oneself, surrendering oneself as a, as a subordinate to the Supreme Lord and the spiritual master, and humility, um, materially kind of, not feeling, oh, I have great wealth, so my wealth will save me. Oh, I have, I'm a doctor. Oh, I'm an engineer. Oh, I have master's. Oh, I have PhD. That will save me. No, nothing will save. Only Krishna will save. Shraddha shabde vishwas kohe sudrida nishchaye Krishna bhakti koila sarva karma krita hoy Shraddha is that confident faith, that firm faith, that by rendering transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord, Lord Hari, Lord Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. Such faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. So faith is very, very important. It's not blind faith. It's reasonable faith. Blind faith, rather, we are putting in a lot of things like driving on the road with we discuss, going to a restaurant, going to amusement parks, and so many things we're putting faith. So in the bhakti process, let's not be unreasonably doubtful. Let's be open-minded. We all have heard the story of Mata Draupadi. She was being disrobed in the assembly of all these great kings. She asked for help. First, she tried to protect. Oh, I am a great, you no, know, I have Kshatriya blood, warrior blood in my, in my veins. So I can protect myself. Her strength was not sufficient. Then she asked for her help from her five Pandavas, brothers, oh, sorry, husbands. They couldn't help. Grandfather Bhishma couldn't help. Teacher Dronacharya couldn't help. Ultimately, she called out, Govinda, Govinda, Gopala, please help me out. Pratigyatava Govinda, Name Bhakta Pranashati, Iti Samsmritya Samsmritya, Pranam Sandharya Miham. Oh, Govinda, you have told in Bhagavad Gita, Kontiya Pratijanahi, Name Bhakta Pranashati. You have told very boldly in Bhagavad Gita that my devotee will never perish. Remembering this, Name Bhakta Pranashati, it is Samsmritya. Remembering this promise of yours again and again, Samsmritya, Samsmritya, Pranam, I am beholding my life. I am, I am maintaining my life. Oh Lord, please come and protect me. And did the Lord come? Yes, of course. Did the Lord come in the form of an infinite sari and the Shasana? with his mighty hands could not, you know, was tired <laughs> because Lord is unlimited. Rest all are limited. 
So same with Prahlad Maharaj. So many attempts were made to kill him. Correct? But he had firm faith. Krishna will always protect me. Krishna will always help me. And then he was thrown off from high mountain cliffs. Was he crying? Was he fearful? No, he was only a five-year-old boy. Imagine the situation. He was not crying. He was not fearful. Why? Mare Krishna rakhe ke, rakhe Krishna mare ke. If Krishna wants to protect me, who can kill me? And if Krishna wants to kill me, who can protect me? Hmm. So he had firm faith and the Lord Vishnu was there to protect him. Hmm. Gajendra, the king of the elephant, he had nice time in, the, in this lake. And the crocodile caught him. Thousands of years he fought, thinking I can help myself. Thinking my family, my wives, my kids would help me out. Ultimately, he remembered the prayers which he had learned in the past life as Gajendra Stuti and called out for the Supreme Lord, offered a flower to him. And with complete state of helplessness, with tears in his eyes, called out to the Supreme Lord and the Lord came to help him. Like that, there are so many examples, my friend, that when we put faith in the material world, that will not take us anywhere. Faith in the Guru and Krishna, only those who have great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the purports of the Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. So that faith is required. Again, it's not blind faith, it's reasonable faith. His Holiness Radhana Swami Maharaj mentions this. To lose one's money, prestige, health, or even life is not such a great loss. But to lose one's faith is the greatest loss. Because when faith is lost, you know, it's not easy to repair that. And we will study how to, to, to energize our faith. Bhagavad Gita 4.40 says, Agyascha ashraddha danascha sam sanshayatma vinashyati nayam lokosti na paro na sukham sanshayatmanaha. Yes, Murli Prabhu, would you like to read this one? Hare Krishna. But ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down. For the doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. Thank you so much. For a doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. That means we have to kill the demons of doubt. Therefore, Krishna is addressed in the Bhagavad Gita as Madhu Sud. Arjuna says, O oh, killer of Madhu, please kill these demons. These demons of doubts arising, I want you to destroy these demons. So again, doubt will not lead us to happiness. That doesn't mean we should not be inquisitive. That doesn't mean that we should not inquire, right? How should we inquire? Who will tell? We discussed recently in our, okay, where they will tell. You have to um, ask or inquire submissively and very respectfully. Very nice. Who knows the verse 434 of Bhagavad Gita? Nobody knows. Yes, please tell. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So rather than having you know, doubtful mentality, we should be inquisitive. We should ask questions to a bona fide spiritual master, but not in a way to challenge, not in a way to check knowledge, but in a way to submissively, humbly inquire. That will lead us to to great spiritual success. Faith is the very substance of spirituality. To protect and develop our faith is the greatest need in spiritual life. No amount of study of scriptures, austerity or charity can help us know God. The only way is to follow the footsteps. Mahajano yena gata sapanta. When we have that faith, when we have faith in that, that faith shows us the way. 
so beautiful. Now the question may come, how do we develop faith, correct? And as I said in the beginning, I'll be sharing the five main processes of experimentation, okay? If we do these nicely, then, then, you know, there is guarantee of Guru Parampara, guarantee of Krishna, guarantee of all the sadhus and shastras. If we are following these five steps certainly and in strictly and sincerely, then the right results will come. Of this, there is no doubt. It's like an irrevocable fact. A, B, C, D, E, very easy to remember also. Sadhu Sangha Nama Kirtana Bhagavata Shravana Mathuravasa Shri Murti Rashadha Yasevana Sakala Sadhana Shrishta E Pancher Anga Krishna Prima Janma E Pancher Alpa Sangha. This is from Chitane Chaita. That Rupa Goswami is mentioning in, in, the, in the nectar of devotion as well, Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. Association of devotees this is the main point to develop faith. If we are in bad association, our faith in the mode of ignorance and passion will grow. If we are in the association of drug addicts, our faith in drugs will go. Very simple. If we are in the association of people who consume a lot of bad things, we will consume. It's just a matter of time. Our faith will start to grow there. And in the contrary, if we are in the right association, like all of you are having these weekly programs, meeting, discussing Bhagavad Gita, discussing Vaishnava songs, etc., honoring prasadam, etc., that will strengthen our spiritual faith. It's a question of what kind of faith we want to surrender or what or, or to strengthen. The association of devotees, very, very important. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi. Lava matra sadhu sangha sarva siddhi hoy. Even a moment of association of a pure devotee can transform our lives. The B is for books. The Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam primarily. Very, very important books to read regularly, to hear regularly, to strengthen our spiritual faith. And not just through, uh, and we see examples I shared so many examples just now. Gajendra's example, Prahlad Maharaj's example, Dhruva Maharaj's example. They're all in the Bhagavatam. So which will help us that if they can do, I can also do. Correct? Even in animal life, a person like Gajendra can do. There is in there hope for us. Even a wicked monstrous like Putana got Krishna's mercy. Isn't there hope for us? There is hope. This Bhagavatam teaches us. C is chanting. Regularly chanting Krishna's holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So some of you are chanting. We have the morning japa program also. You are more than welcome to join. Or you can join, uh, you can just do at your home with your family or alone. However situations allow. Mm. Um, when it's done individually, it's called japa. When it's done in a congregational uh, way, everyone together with midanga, kartal, and etc., it's called kirtan. Both are important. And chanting is the most important. The yuga dharma, very, very important part of our sadhana bhakti. And then D is for two things. Diet, that means prasad. So we have to go to Ravi Prasad Prabhu to get prasadam, right? <laughs> because he has prasadam in his name. <laughs> so prasad means mercy so prabhu ke sakshat darshan <laughs> prasad <laughs> or it's like direct uh, seeing krishna face to face and just two days back mother narayani gave a wonderful class about the glories of prasadam so many examples so many examples so many people's lives have been transformed by just taking krishna prasadam and if you want to know in more detail, certainly you're encouraged to hear that. And then also deity worship. Very, very important that we have some form of picture uh, or lamination in the beginning. Later we can get the, uh, like, uh, lamination is also a deity. They discuss, they discuss the Krishna manifests in eight forms. But in the beginning, we may not be conversant with the rules and regulations. So... We can start with some pictures of Gornithai 
or uh, or jagannath and start to offer something offer some water offer tulsi leaves offer some bhoga offer some uh, fruits and flowers that's deity worship genuinely offer some lamb etc and we will see a great change in our in our journey in our spiritual journey and then entering vrindavan now that means you all have to leave jackson and go to vrindavan how many of you want to do that <laughs> right we may want to do but you know then a lot of ifs and buts will come correct what will happen if will that will happen so we are not encouraging that we want all of you to continue to stay there and make the whole jackson vrindavan right and how will that happen if we do the, all the a b c d firstly our home will become vrindavan yatra gayanti tasth yatra gayanti mad bhakta tat tishthami narada krishna says where where am i present you know krishna's visiting card all of you may have some form of visiting card which shows where where do you live what's your phone number what's your occupation so krishna gives a visiting card narada muni his assistant gives wherever my devotees wherever krishna's devotees come together and chant his name form qualities he's personally present and where krishna is present what does it become it becomes vrindavan right so you can be in jackson or you can be in new york you can be in new delhi or wherever tampa uh that place the home can become vrindavan by inviting devotees serving devotees giving and doing all these a b c d together the whole home will become a dham um it will not be just a bhavan right bhavan you know in hindi in or in sanskrit also they say home as bhavan right they say bhavan but the bhavan the bh is for bhagwan where people take whether the residents of that bhavan take the shelter of the bhagwan and the process of bhakti and become bhakta if you take the bh out of bhavan what does it become what will it become one one and what does one mean jungle forest jungle. forest and who resides in the forest pasu pakshi animals animals i didn't say that all right <laughs> so all of you got the message so that means we can make our um the true meaning of home by making bh of bhagwan as the center lord itran prabhu also says i have opened up this market place nadiya godro me nitya nanda mahajan patiya che naam hata jivira karan for the for saving the fallen souls of this kali yuga i have opened a market place of holy name but he is giving to what is the qualification required millions of dollars phd degrees very you know miss world or mr world oh okay you need to be of certain age or in a certain color of skin no shraddhavan jana he shraddhavan jana he prabhu ragya hi e magi e bhiksha bolo krishna bhajo krishna koro krishna shiksha prabhu ragya hi bhai magi e bhiksha is chanting o oh, people of faith o oh, people of faith chant krishna's name worship him teach others about krishna so only faithless persons in bhagavad gita also krishna says don't give this message to the faithless souls those who have lot of um, demoniac propensities or or lot of too much doubts they will destroy our faith correct so we have to refrain part of association also means to refrain from those association which is not good for us which is not conducive for us that will destroy our faith hmm. bhagavad gita 9.3 ashraddana purushan dharmasya asya parantapa aprapya mam nivartante mrityu sansara vartmani shradul prabhu or any of their family members want to read maybe the translation and one can read the purport those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot entertain me o conquer of enemies therefore they return to the path of birth and death in this material world thank you 
Shweta Mataji, you want to read the purport? This is not the full purport, but the important section of it. Uh, which one, Guruji? Uh, yeah, here on the right side. Okay. The faithless cannot uh, accomplish this process of devotional service. That is the support of this verse. Faith is created by association with devotees. Unfortunate people, even after hearing all the evidence of Vedic literature from great personalities, still have no faith in God. They are hesitant and cannot stay fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, faith is a most important factor for progress in Krishna consciousness. In the Chaitanya, Chaitanya, yeah, Chaitanya it is said that faith is the complete conviction that that faith uh, faith is the complete convic conviction that simple by serving the supreme lord sri krishna one can achieve all perfection that is called real faith thank you thank you so much so this is real faith that if we take shelter of the supreme lord the spiritual master the process a b c d e everything else will fall in place Right? Everything else will fall in place. We have to have that faith. Devotional service is just like a seed sown in the heart of the living entity. And if he goes on hearing and chanting, basically doing the process of A, B, C, D, E, association, hearing, chanting, uh, DT worship, etc., etc., just as the seed of a tree fructifies by regularly watering, the spiritual plant of devotional service grows gradually. So life is a preparation. This is not a, some experiments have, you know, 20 minutes. Some we need to perform for 20 hours, correct? Some we need to perform for 20 days. But this is a little bigger experiment because we are treating a very bigger problem. Because from lifetimes and lifetimes, this problem has kind of overcome, overpowered this us, the jiva, the forgetfulness of the Supreme Lord. So it, we need to give the right time to the experimentation also. Otherwise, one should not feel, oh, I have been chanting for two days, nothing is happening. Oh, I have been chanting for two months, nothing is happening. The doctor tells the patient the, the dose of the medicine and the, the amount and the frequency also, correct? If the doctor tells that you have to take it for two months and the patient comes back after two days, it is not working. Well, what will be the first response? Well, did you take it for the right duration? I asked you to, correct? So we have to take and protect this faith by surrounding with good association and refraining from bad association. That means those things, a lot of problems happen in this day and age is because of the social media, correct? Because they see things, oh, my friends, you know, they're having a nice time in the beaches of Mauritius and they're posting picture and they're putting posting pictures in Switzerland. They may just post that one picture and after that they may have fight, but someone else is kind of envying, oh, oh, look at, look at her. She's going to Mauritius, she's going to Switzerland, she's going to Hawaii, and I am, you know, putting Hawaii chapel, right? <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm, she's, <laughs> Hawaii is like a chapel, like a, like a <laughs> so, the point is, a lot of problems happen. Oh, this, this media says that. Oh, this says that. The science says there is no God. Oh, this doctor says there is no God. Oh, no, we don't have to follow. We are not against science. So let, don't take me wrong. I mean, we are using all these online platforms to, to associate, right? So we are science in harmony with spiritual consciousness will take us to the right destination. We are not saying that ignore the science. All of you are very educated, you know, devotees, some are, and, and some are pursuing that. That's absolutely fine. But science should always help us to be more Krishna conscious. Hmm. So we are not saying to give up education or give up uh, all the scientific things. We use, you know, mobile phones, we use laptops, you know, all of you are using some gadgets to connect to this. 
This is all uh, good things from science, correct? So, but in all the great scientists also, if there are genuine scientists and humble scientists like Einstein and, and, and many, many calculators, they were all great believers in, in, the, in the Supreme Lord, in God. Some of them used to read Bhagavad Gita as well. Because you may know Einstein said that my knowledge is nothing in front of the Supreme Lord. It's like a, one great scientist said, my knowledge is like a particle of sand on the, on the ocean of a beach. And you go to a beach, just you know, put like one finger like this, and you'll get like at least 50 particles of sand, correct? How many particles of sand are there on a beach? Millions, trillions, we can't count. These humble scientists were God conscious. They say, my knowledge is nothing in front of this. And then finally, Krishna concludes, Bhagavad Gita 18.63, I have explained, uh, to you, more confidential, knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate on this fully. Krishna is not saying blind faith. That means deliberate. Try to understand it through, through submissive and uh, faithful attitude. Don't blindly accept anything. Try it for yourself, right? Take a free sample. <laughs> That's what they say. Try it for yourself, right? Come, come for the programs for you know, a couple of weeks. Try chanting for a couple of weeks. Try to follow the process. Try to follow the do's and don'ts. And you will feel. And then you decide. There is no harm in trying. Correct? You don't have to. It's not like some money-making scheme. Invest $1,000 or $10,000. It's not. We are not asking for money. We are not asking for anything. The only intention Prabhupada came to the United States uh, was to give this message of Krishna consciousness. So with that, I like to... So with that, I'd like to pause and because uh, it's already a little four minutes over time. And But we, if we have time, I don't know what's the schedule. We can take some reflections, some questions or some feedback. If you like anything, it's certainly from the mercy of the spiritual master. If uh, you know, something was wrong, it's because of my own shortcomings. So thank you so much for giving me this wonderful chance to to share um, the words of Sri Guru and Gauranga with all of you for my own purification. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guruji. Wonderful session. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, I Krishna, Prabhuji. Some devotees wanted to ask questions. I saw uh, Prabhuji uh, Sahas Thakur wanted to ask a question. They had raised hand. Would you please go ahead and ask anything? Yeah, I wanted to say something. I don't like you. You were, you were talking about like the f gadgets and phones that you could use. Well, th that are good things. What they could be good things if you use them in the right way like if you use them in Krishna conscious they would be good but if you don't use them in the right way like let's say you use them to like get into other bad things then it then it's not a good it wouldn't be good for you thank you that's a wonderful it's a wonderful realization everything comes with this pros and cons uh, yes it's like the two sides of the coin so thank you, that's so true. We can make uh, the best use of it and we can also use it for wrong purposes. Thank you. Any, any Jackson devotees have any comments, questions? Because others I keep meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yes, please, um, anybody has any questions? Uh, Prabhuji did an extensive, covered an extensive discussion on uh, basics of Krishna consciousness, and we are all very new. So please uh, clarify any doubts with Prabhuji today. Uh, yes, I have one question. Or like, rather, I want to know. Um, very often, like, say, um, first, let me put it this way, like, what is dharma? Is Hindu a dharma? Is Christian a dharma? Is Muslim a dharma? And I have like say many questions. I'm not very religious or devotee type of person. 
but I have this question that definitely I want to hear uh, from someone like you who has knowledge, who has read uh, extensively and uh, is kind of an you know, expert in this area. Thank you. What's your good name, Prabhu? I think. Uh, Binay Prabhuji. Binay? Yeah. Binay. Wow, such a beautiful name. Vidya Didati Vinayam. You are so learned and humble also. Hmm? Therefore, your name is very apt. Uh, and so are your children, uh, Avani, uh, sorry, Vinita and, um, and Atharv. They're really very, very sincere. I have been interacting with them for couple of months now. So thank you so much for your nice question. I don't have any knowledge, Prabhu, but this is all uh, from our teachers, Shri Prabhupada and his, his disciples. So dharma is said to be the, the original nature of a jiva. Dharma is said to be like something which cannot be separated. Hmm from the, the jiva. And what is the real dharma? Jiva or swarupa also, sometimes connected with dharma. Jivara swarupa krishna nitya das. Krishna tatha shakti bheda bhed prakash. That means the dharma is like the dharma of, of, of uh, you know, water is, is liquidated, it flows, correct? You cannot separate the, the liquidity from water. Similarly, you cannot separate heat from the fire, right? That's the dharma of the fire, right? Can imagine it. So similarly, we cannot separate the, the servitorship from a jiva, correct? We're all serving. No one can say I'm not serving anyone else. Someone is serving their husband. Someone is serving their wife. Someone is serving their boss. Someone is serving their children. Someone is serving dog, someone is serving cow, someone is serving the nation, someone is serving the community, someone is serving someone or the other. Do you all agree with that? Right? We are all serving. So someone is serving Hollywood, Bollywood stars, talking about their katha, what's going on in Hollywood, what's going on in Bollywood, what's a new movie, where is this actress going, what's he doing, what's she doing? We're all serving someone or the other. Now, religion is, or these, what we generally call as dharma, Hindu dharma, Muslim dharma, these are not actually, the, what we follow is sanatan dharma. Sanatan means eternal. There is no end to this. All these dharmas, like Hinduism, and Muslim, and, and Christian, and Jews, and Buddhism, they came at a certain point in history, correct? Mm -hmm. Like Lord Buddha came about 2,500 years back. Same with Christianity, uh, started with Lord Jesus, 2,000 years back approximately. And, uh, but same with Hindu Dharma also. Hindu Dharma is not the Sanatan Dharma actually. It is the Vedic Dharma or the principles of the, the Vedas. That's called Sanatan Dharma. That's what we follow. And what is that? To serve the Supreme Lord. To understand who is Bhagwan, who am I, and what is the process. That's the real eternal thing. Bhakti, Bhagavan, and Bhakta. Rest, all things are temporary. So this is Sanatan Dharma. To understand our Sambandha, that I am a Krishna servant, or the servant of the Supreme Lord. What is the Abhideya? That means the process. I need to render spiritual uh, service or devotional service, bhakti, unto whom? Who is that eternal thing? Nitya nitya naam chitnas chitra naam, that supreme lord. Govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajam. So this is Sanatan dharma. This is real dharma. Because all the other dharmas can be changed, right? One may be Hindu today, one can become Christian or vice versa. One could be Christian, one could become Muslim. This is not eternal. These are also designations. Therefore, Krishna says, Sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo mokshishyami mashuchaha Give up all these religions. These are all designations. Male, female, rich, poor, 
US citizen or Indian citizen, black skin or white skin or brown skin or yellow skin. These are all designations. We have to transcend these or become above these and understand our true dharma, our true position. And that is to be a servant of the Supreme Lord. And the word servant, actually, sometimes people think, oh, servant, hey, servant doesn't sound good. Hey, sir, I want to be a master, right? But real, you know, being servant, material world is like a opposite reflection of the spiritual world. In the material world, servant is considered the lowest. In the reflection, the lowest point is actually the topmost point, correct? Do you get this point? So let's say servant, the topmost. In the opposite reflection, it will become the lowermost. The devotee, the servant, enjoys more than the master, and therefore Lord Goranga Mahaprabhu comes as the servant devotee to see, oh, my devotee is enjoying more than me. Let me experience the rasa of a servant of Krishna. So, does that help <laughs> or too complex? Uh, Prabhuji, I'm so pleased that you said this, and um, like you know, the way you defined, I hope, like, say, not only Athar and Benita, but all the kids, like, you know, kind of uh, take a note of it and uh, try to understand it that this is what is the dharma and your definition is kind of, you know, perfect. I'm very happy to hear this. I have like some more questions that I definitely I would like to clarify from you, but I don't know if your time will permit. Uh, I am at the mercy of Nirbhai Prabhu and Natasha Mataji. <laughs> Prabhuji, uh, we have uh, we have more time definitely, uh, but let's see if anybody else has any questions, any doubts they can clarify. We can hear from Prabhuji all day, but we don't want to impose on you. <laughs> it's uh, Sunday, no way to go. Ravi Prabhu has a question. Okay, Prabhuji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, all devotees. Prabhuji, my, today we discussed everything so nicely, but uh, it is like people who have not started will also start. Person like me who have started on a Krishna consciousness path for like few years, and I fluctuate up and down, up and down. Recently, it is a little bit more reliable and consistent because I think I'm blessed to have a lot of association from you guys and other devotee here. But my question is for me, as well as for everybody else who starts, how to keep this going, like maintenance of it, because starting and stopping is a very easy thing. How do one maintain it? Because when there is ups and downs comes in the, your daily routine, your challenges. So can you please give some tips? Because I know you've been doing this Bhagavad Gita for many years and Bhagavatam for many years consistently. And also, I think Natasha Mataji, uh, I think she did not mention, Parvuji is a full-time engineer. So he has a full-time job and then he does all these services. So I wanted to get some tips. How do you maintain or how should we maintain this uh, eternal nature to be a servant for the rest of my life or rest of our life. Hare Krishna, thank you so much Prabhuji for your wonderful question. I'm, I'm just a neophyte or very, very new in this journey, but uh, whatever I have heard from my seniors, I'll just share. So first of all, you know, I'm a continuous improvement engineer. We do a lot of lean and Six Sigma things. You may have a lot of 5S. Who has a lot of 5S? Hmm? You know, a lot of 5S? It's, it's, five, it's kind of a Chinese, or oh, sorry, Japanese methodology, um, right? In workplaces. I think Vinay Prabhu has heard, right? Probably, yeah. Some of you may have heard. Maybe those. <laughs> I'll, I'll share that formula. So first of all, we have to take sort. The first S is for sort. Sort means we have to remove the non-value added activities from our life. Non-value added activities means things which are not conducive for our material and spiritual journey. And anyone, you know, like time wasters, right? Time wasters. And I was telling actually in the kids class that kids, this will help you in, the, in your even your parents may not be aware of these, these time management principles we are discussing. 
Um, so I would encourage everyone to see that class also. It applies to everyone. So, so that means, and actually it's, this, this, this deserves like a whole session actually. I'll be doing injustice to speak this in, in five minutes, but uh, because there are a lot of things to be spoken. So the first step is to, to remove the, the unnecessary things, sort it out, right? Sort it out, get the, the bad things out. The bad things which are consuming our precious time and energy, right? Then we will have things which are really meaningful to us, correct? We have to set in priority our, our spiritual life, our health, our family, our relationships, kids. I'm not saying spiritual life means to ignore our job or ignore our kids. Those are value-added activities, okay? Those are important things. We don't, we don't have to get rid of those things. Krishna tells Arjuna, a lot of, you know, great devotees are in their grihastha life. They have family, they have jobs, they have their business, etc. So we don't have to give up those things. But I know if we honestly ask ourselves, we will find some non-value-added activities in our life. Raise your hand if you agree with that idea, that we will find some non-value-added activities in our routine, correct? Everyone agrees that there are things which we are utilizing our time, which is not helping on our job, not helping in our bhakti, not helping in our relationships, not helping in our health, correct? Those we need to take out. Because time, anyone has 25 hours here? Anyone? 25 hours? Okay, all have 24. Okay, just checking to make sure we're all on the same page. So we have 24 hours only. That means we have to utilize those 24 hours. And some of you are present for Bhagavad Gita. Your friend could be watching a movie and polluting one's consciousness, correct? The time will not stop, right? Time will keep moving. Sometimes it will move one hour extra fast, like yesterday night, right? So time will not stop. We have to set. The next S is set in the right order. So set the right things in the right order. Okay, morning time, I'll do this. Plan, 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 plan. The more you plan, the better it will get. And tell, you know, tell your family, this is my time for family. This is my time for my health. This is my time for my work. This is my time for my homework. This is my time for my yoga. This is my time for my... I know it may sound sometimes fanatical, but it will really help. Discuss as a family. Discuss as a family because nowadays kids also have schedule, right? They have homework, they have projects, they have assignments and classes and what they're more busy than the parents, correct? So discuss as a family and keep some time as a family also to get together, chant some, you know, bhajan, kirtan, and read some Ramayana or Bhagavad Gita. That will really help. So prioritize. You can do a lot of things as a family together. You can go for a walk together. You can do yoga together. You can read Bhagavad Gita together. You can have lunch or dinner together as far as possible. So try to plan, try to do bhakti together as far as possible. So plan effectively, set right things in the right order. Um, these two are the main steps. So if we have a nice plan, and of course, we need mercy also. We need good association. The devotees who are doing it nicely by taking inspiration from those, by learning from those, how are they managing? What happens when, when you know, difficult situations come in their lives? How do they handle those situations? So let me try to learn. Let me approach and ask them missively. So if we do these, take off the unimportant things, set a right priority and emergencies will come. Sometimes the plan will not go the way we would like it to go, but take as a lesson and keep moving, keep moving. We need to recharge our batteries by good association. Like we recharge our phones, otherwise they die, right? So to consistently use that phone, we need to consistently have devotee association also. If we meet devotees just on Janmashtami and expect our spiritual life to go consistently, it's as good as saying, I'll charge my phone once a year, but I want it to work every day. Correct? Doesn't sound like a good idea. That means we have to recharge every day. And these five processes will help us to be more consistent, more and more consistent. Does that help? Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay, anybody else has any questions for Prabhuji? I'll take one last question, I think. 
If uh, nobody is asking, maybe Vinay Prabhu, you can ask, you want to ask one more question you had? Uh, uh, if time allows, then maybe like, you know, I'll ask. Uh, and Prabhu is like, I, as I said, like, you know, I'm not very religious person. I do not do like, you know, puja and everything like regularly. I do go to temple and um, something makes me feel like very, very concerned when like say these young children are introduced to um, religion and everything. There are like say different forms um, without understanding, like as you explained dharma very beautifully, like Hinduism and what is dharma, what is not dharma. Uh, a very kind of, you know, popular, a pop form of dharma is like in practice, um, and uh, you will see that, okay, anyone can chant uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, or uh, Jai Sri Ram, and they think that, okay, they're following dharma, they're doing dharma. But uh, when it comes to practice, or when you look at them closely, they're doing like many wrong things uh, in kind of, you know, by doing this and thinking that, oh, no, like they're doing great. They're like, you know, trying to save uh, Hinduism, or they're trying to... Uh, save dharma, following dharma, they are dharmic, those who are not doing this are dharmic and uh, kind of, you know, creating these perceptions. Uh, we talked about like, you know, labs. We know that like, say, before entering the labs, everyone has to do some kind of, you know, theory, um, reading, and then you have to go prepared with like proper attire, equipped with equipment, you, know, you should know, like how to handle those equipments. If you don't know, then like you will end up burning the lab or like harming yourself. Prabhuji, my question is like, say, how do you kind of, you know, suggest like this uh, without like say following dharma, without deviating it, maybe like say someone is not chanting. It doesn't mean like say they should not create this perception that, okay, those who are not doing your way of dharma is adharmic or like irreligious. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. That's a very nice question again. And uh, yes, you are right. A lot of wrong things happen on the name of religion and name of God consciousness. But therefore, we need to follow the proper guru, the proper spiritual master. Otherwise, we will end up burning ourselves and others, as you said. And in this society, you know, there is a demand and supply, right? There are a lot of people who don't want proper guru, who are not ready to accept proper guru. They want a so-called guru who will say, hey, keep doing what you're doing. You do all nonsense. You eat what you want. You drink what you want. And just give me some money and all set. I'll take care of this. Then they, then Krishna will arrange for that guru, that bogus guru or that Cheater, not teacher, a swindler, a hoaxer, who will take them to the wrong path. And, you know, and the tendency in Kali Yuga is that people don't want to pay the price to get the gold, but they want to get fake gold. Correct? So those people will get more demand because majority of the people want that. Correct? Majority of the people don't want to pay the price of gold. Gold here refers to pure bhakti. But they want so-called bhakti or so-called dharma. And then they will go to bogus gurus. Because there are a lot of bogus gurus also. Wrong gurus also. So therefore, if it is done in a proper way and we are ready to pay the proper price, and what's that proper price? Not millions of dollars, not any other qualifications. Sincerity the price of sincerity, the price of genuineness, then we will, we will appreciate everyone like Prabhupada. Prabhupada was never against any religion. He said, Jesus is our guru. Not when a person maturely follows bhakti, they, that person is, sir, is a well-wisher to everyone. Sarvasya chaham hridi sannivishto. What's that word? Titikshva karunika suhridam sarva bhutana ajata shatra vashanta sadhava sadhu bhushana. They are tolerant. They are suhrida sarva bhutana. Sabke suhrid. They are well wished to everyone. So they are 
very very tolerant they they pray for others benefit raupad when he came he was not biased oh i will only in, you know initiate indian people or only initiate wealthy people the audience who came they were from all different backgrounds from all different sorts of bad habits drug addictions and illicit things etc but raupad never judged them raupad gave them the pure message of bhakti whether one is hindu or christian or muslim or one is doing you know whatever if that person is willing to accept the right thing you know raupad gave it and never you know true religion true bhakti will not teach fanatism and fanatism happens not because of true bhakti but it happens because hey my religion is better if you don't follow my religion i'll i'll destroy you it's because of power desires etc so now the question comes well how do we understand if we genuinely seek out krishna says prabhupad mentions in this dhruv maharaj purport if one is searching for a guru like narada then krishna will certainly arrange for that spiritual master in one's life if one is searching for a wrong guru who wants to give a tinge of so called bhakti mixed with just material attachment that majority of the people want then they will get a so called wrong guru now how do we teach at home by being good examples ourselves because children will learn from the example of parents they are like sponge they will absorb whatever the parents are doing whatever the parents are following correct so we need to be a good disciple under a good bona fide spiritual master follow the process of bhakti nicely and they will just follow your footsteps hari krishna hari krishna prabhu ji i'm so pleased to hear this from you and uh, this is so nice and i believe like you know even i get to learn more from you uh, these thoughts beautiful thoughts and everything so thank you so much thank you vinay prabhu you are very very humble vinay am nitya dadati vinay thank you prabhu ji such a, your such inspirational talk and all those answers i hope everybody feels inspired to start reading bhagavad gita and start chanting and hearing more and more uh does anyone else has any other uh questions any pressing doubts they want to clarify with prabhu ji sheetal mata ji is asking something yes mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji what a wonderful class thank you so much um i just had a question um in adding to what binay prabhu ji and ravi prabhu ji said like when you are pursuing the spiritual path um does one have to give up all the material activities per se or how do you strike a balance especially like when children are involved like for example eating out in restaurants or you know uh, just leaving out activities like if they want to watch any television shows or so one should just give it up altogether or should you strike a balance somewhere to make it easy thank you thank you for your genuine question see the growth in bhakti is very very organic correct what does it mean it's very natural progression if one abruptly does something it may lead to difficulties and not sustained growth because we don't want one day do something and rest of the year forget it we want sustained growth in our lives and in our spiritual journeys as well and you know when i was in college in 2007 walking on the roads of goa where people go for kind of everything but studies i went there for studies <laughs> so so i as i met devotees and i as well do you go to beaches do you go to to play something do you they they had kind of they said no to all those things and they were you know just my one year senior two year senior probably they didn't know at that time how to maturely answer my question and then some other senior devotees came and they maturely answered my question which i'll repeat and my mother said to me also which i cannot forget do your best in the present situation and naturally the progression will happen 
naturally the the bad things will go out okay and the good things which are good for us we will continue to accept them more and more so now this is a very specific question right so certainly we have to give up the grossly bad things right and that too also slowly like for example we have to focus more on the positive first that's the the main point rather than you know i say don't do this don't do this don't do this because i don't know everyone's journey here and and in everyone is a different level so i would suggest add those five items the association the books the chanting the deity worship and make your home vrindavan and you will see naturally krishna will dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayanti te krishna says in bhagavad gita naturally we he will give the intelligence with which we can surrender unto him more so it will not be forceful you'll not say your daughter hey give up this because i've been telling you for last 5 years to give up this rather than their positive energy will increase so much that there is no room for negative things correct so that should be our agenda that should that's that's not how prabhupad gave Prabhupad focused, you know, focused on the spark. He didn't say, "Hey, you are doing meat eating, you are doing illicit affairs, you are doing drug addiction." He saw the the spark and fanned the spark. He gave, you know, he saw, oh, this person has wants to play, you know, bongo. So, me, you no, know, why don't you chant? So, encourage the positive side by chanting, reading, hearing, etc. And naturally, in a very organic and slow, slowly. the good side will keep growing and the impurities will keep going down so that should be our agenda as well and krishna will give guidance also and if there are specifics we should maturely handle those correct we should maturely handle those specifics under you know one to one guidance with our teachers um and how we can help our our family and understand them as well so they should feel that bhakti is a joyful process it's not a process of negation no 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 we have to make everything joyful we have to make krishna consciousness as fun krishna consciousness is joyful so we have to make it fun and joyful and enriching and and educating and entertaining so that they feel so much wow i don't want to give up bhakti i want to take part in drama i want to take part in this uh, essay i want to write i want to do some service i want to learn harmonium i want to i want to learn dancing for krishna i want to make nice cuisines for krishna isn't that joyful there is so much flavor there is so much rasa so much variety then will i worry about my old tv show which i used to watch no there is higher taste in the higher taste will naturally overcome the lower taste vishaya avani vartante raso cham raso pyasya khantya oh, i'm forgetting that that take this higher taste and the lower taste will will be able to give that up organically and naturally and i've seen that in my life also uh, in college you know all the 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 bad association and the, you know things which are not conducive they just naturally went away not because my teachers told me hey don't do this don't do that uh, and it's not you know look at proper disciples life hippies to happies correct so many changes naturally because there is so much higher taste in bhakti is that okay so focus more on the do's focus more on making bhakti a fun and and entertaining and educating and livening thank you prabhu प्रभु जी दिस वाज वी वर ट्राइंग टू से विषयाविनी वर्तन्ते निराहारस्य देहिनः रसवर्जम रसोपयस्य परम दृष्टवान वर्तते वेरी नाइस यू वांट टू रीड द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ दिस प्रभु प्लीज ऑन द इंग्लिश हिंदी में है ला बेटा इंग्लिश ला इंग्लिश ला दो द एम्बॉडीड सोल मे बी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड फ्रॉम सेंस एन्जॉयमेंट द टेस्ट फॉर सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स रिमेंस बट seizing such engagements engagements by experiencing a higher test he is fixed in consciousness thank you so apt prabhu thank you 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank for you know taking out time for and giving us your such valuable association and uh, the wonderful talk and uh, you know answering so many of our questions that uh, bother us in day-to-day -day life. And thank you to all the devotees also for listening and uh, asking such uh, wonderful questions that benefit everyone listening and uh, to the answers of these by uh, Grace uh, Shubhulas Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much. Amazing. All the yeah. references from Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrit, all the real life examples. I hope everybody uh, followed it. It was very, very nice. Amazing to hear from you. Wonderful experience. Thank you, Prabhuji. Uh, just on behalf of our Jackson devotee team, let's everybody unmute and say thank you to Parvoji by saying three times Hari Bol. Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare So I think for Jackson devotees, we like to do a one, one round of congregational chanting together. Please uh, stay. Um, but uh, we'll just do our one round of chanting as our routine. So whoever wants to say, please uh, stay on for one round of congregational chanting. And uh, thank you very much for Shubhilas Prabhu.